All right. Class is distracted today. Attention. Attention. Please. Okay. Let's, let's start. It's going to be a tough day. Okay. So let's pay attention and see what we need to do. All right. So uh, we talked about string last time. We created a string to get rid of the string that we have. Hello. We were all waiting for you. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, we created a, a class called string to replace the, the character, null terminated character array in C language. Uh, we discussed uh, that uh, it would be a nice idea to encapsulate all the dirty work that you do behind the scene for the, for the string using string header for all and all those good stuff and put it together in a class so the class can do that for us. To do that, we created um, um, a class called string and uh, we uh, created a data pointer over there that is of type character pointer so it can actually hold an array of characters. We're gonna make the string manage a null terminated array of characters and make our life easier. By how did we deal with this? We, um, to be able to overcome the very first problem with, uh, with, uh, uh, with what? With uh, uh, character strings that every time we want to know what is the length of a string, we have to keep counting all the characters one by one until we hit the null. That's what string length does. Instead of doing that, we are actually holding a, uh, uh, um, a length of type size t, which is a positive integer, and uh, we keep it over there. We have uh, uh, a function called is empty that tells us if uh, the string is empty or not, um, which brings us to uh, this case. What is a string empty? So I have to take a look at it. I don't remember what I wrote last time, so I'm going to look at it. So yeah, for a string empty is essentially a string that has no data in it, nothing in it. Okay. Um, that's what an empty string is. Um, we create um, a string using uh, uh, a regular um, uh, constant character pointer, which is essentially a C string. And if the C string actually exists and points to something, we're going to get its size, allocate the memory for it, and put the memory, uh, copy it into there. And we're going to see, we're going to need to do lots of this which if you take a look at it, there's one over here. Again, it's doing the same thing. And then copies, and it keeps going like that. So soon we have to modularize that, because that process is going to happen a lot. And to do that, we're going to create some stuff to make our life easier. Um, I have seen your code. Um, um, I wanted to mark workshop 4.2 and comment. But the problem is that to comment your code, I had to copy your code and put it on that mark page thingy and tell you what is wrong with it. Many of you have written the code perfectly. The problem is that uh, the yes, the thing that you have to get for yes or no, and uh, the, the other thing, the integer that you're supposed to get for the extension that is supposed to, you put the code of whole thing under the read function. These are things that are generalized. You're not supposed to do that. Like if you're asking for a yes or no, go to your utils and create a yes function. That checks for y and n and returns true or false. If you are getting an integer for an extent for between range of yada yada, we already had get integer in the in the in the utils. Just write another function with an ex with range and call that get int in it. So you have everything set for you. Don't um, we call it reinventing a wheel. Don't do that. Do the thing once and reuse your code over and over and over and over which we are going to do for, for these things soon. To display a function, we check to see if the function is not empty. But since we overloaded the Boolean operator that does the same thing for us, as you see, Boolean operator says if it's not empty, right? So it returns true if the, the string sits in a condition. So instead of doing not as, as empty, I'm going to say if this is good, right? That's much better. So I'm going to say if this is good, do that. It's going to automatically go to the Boolean thingy and not is empty, but that makes more sense. If this is true, it's good. Display it. Otherwise, don't. Length returns the length. Uh, operator plus equal was the first request to concatenate the two strings, and we've done that. We said, okay, we're going to do a plus equal over here, and, gonna, 
and we are going to um, have another, cons uh, another, another string coming in with a reference, um, and we get the size of that string and the size that I have, and then I'm going to put them together, get a length for both of them, keep it in a temporary thing, set the uh, temporary uh, array to an empty array uh, C string, and then uh, I'll check if I am in a good condition. I'm going to copy everything that I have in there. If I'm empty, I'm not going to copy anything. Then I'm going to check to see if the string that is coming in is empty or not. If the string is empty, I'm not going to do anything. If it's not, I'm going to concatenate that using strcat after the temp. Then I'm going to update the lengths to become the length of two. And then I'm going to delete the old data and replace the old data with the new data by saying that uh, M data is now equals to temp. So this temp thingy, uh, although it's nice to call it temp, but it's a good idea to name these things the, not like that, you don't. It's better to name them properly. So in here, I'm going to say in current block, which is that thing that I have. I'm going to temp, I'm going to say uh, a new data or new M data, even make it, no, new data is fine. Or uh, it will, I, it will, I, I'm tempted to write concatenated, uh, but I'm not going to do that. As it's new data. It's the new data that I'm doing. So the temp, temp is not a temporary thing. It's actually a permanent thing. It's the pointer that is temporary. So that wasn't a good thing to write. So I'm going to replace all that. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say character new data is the combination of both data. Now I'm going to make the new data zero. See, now it actually makes sense. It's not temp anymore. Um, now I'm going to say if this object is not empty, copy the data of this object into the new data. If the, the one that I want to concatenate is not empty, then concatenate the data of that one to, to this one. And why didn't I actually write over here S underline uh, M data? Why did I, why, how, it, how this is going to work? Because again, SDRCAT craves for a constant character pointer, and I have overloaded the constant character pointer. Automatically, it's going to get its M data. And that's a beautiful thing about uh, conversion operation overload. So it copies the data of the other one, and it combines the length of two in the length of uh, uh, the left one, uh, deletes the old data, and sets the new data. Uh, makes the, the, uh, the, the pointer to point to the new data and mission accomplished and I'll return the current one. And that was, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, thing that we had. What is it? Uh, the, um, the concatenation done with a plus equal. So um, after that, obviously, the two operator overloads came through just to show you what they are. And um, we overloaded the, the, the operator, uh, the insertion operator, so it can get printed exactly like regular variables. Therefore, in this thing that we had in here, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I could simply create a, create a, um, so I put test one and test two and say why this works. And I, hopefully, you looked at it, and now you're going to tell me why this works. Um, when, when I look at the CPP file over here, for test one, it's crystal clear. I have name, Fred, last name, Soleil, and I do name plus equal. And when it gets, when it gets executed, obviously, three years later, four years later, it's compiled. So when it gets executed, obviously, this, the, the, the result will be the concatenated version of both, but I want a space in the middle. My question was why this works if I do it like this. Did I overload the plus equal with a constant character pointer? No, I didn't. But if I go to the second one and actually execute the second one, you will see that the second one actually works perfectly. So it actually puts the space in the middle with absolutely no problem. Question is, how come line number 14 works without overloading plus equal with a constant character pointer? Who has answer for that? Should I choose the victim? No? 
how come it works? Going back to C++, when something is not defined, and I ask C++ to do it for me, uh, there's something is not defined, I put a variable over there that is not supposed to work with that operation. What does C++ do if the operation is not designed for that type? It tries to cast, cast it. So what is the meaning of cast in C++? Yeah, uh, converting the type of a variable. Creating a type of a variable out of? Converting one type to another. Yes, out of the one that we want to cast. So that's essentially what C++ tries to do. When it comes over here, it says name plus equal constant character pointer. Oops, there is nothing to do that. So what it tries to do, C++ tries to do, is to make that thing work. It says, let me see if there is a plus equal in name. Looks at it, yes there is, line 12. What does it receive? A string, correct? It receives a string. So it says, wait a minute, I'm receiving a string. In here, I have a constant character pointer. Can I make a string, temporary string, out of a constant character pointer? What is the definition? What does it mean, making something out of something in C++? It means, no, no, pardon me, no, to make an I have an object. I want to make that object out of some other type. What do I need to implement to do that? No? 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 Okay, I have class student. Okay? And I want to make a student out of a student number. What is the type of a student number? An unsigned integer. If I want to create a student out of a student number, what do I need to implement in the student class? Constructor! Thank you very much. A constructor. Constructors are what? That are the procedures that create an object out of another object. Now, do I have a constructor that creates a string out of a constant character pointer? Yes. Hence, Casting. So casting is not only conversion overload, but also creating a temporary nameless or out of another type. I do not need to overload any casting for that. All the compiler needs is to see if there is a constructor in a string that accepts a constant character pointer. If that's the case, it's going to build one, a temporary one, and pass its reference to whatever it is, that S thingy. So when on line 14, when it gets executed, actually a temporary object will get created. So to, just to show you what happens, it's a good idea to create some kind of a, um, what should we call it, um, uh, uh, debug statements in it so we can see what it is. Later on, we could remove these things. So the most efficient way of creating debug statements is using preprocessor directors, which is essentially exactly like we have done with, uh, uh, with the header file. So you see I say if not define something. I can do something like that with if not define and create a debug definition. If the, defin if the debug is defined, then I'll create, uh, what shall we call it, uh, some, uh, statements and I can remove them by undefining debug. But that's too dirty. I'm going to do something that is inefficient and also teach something with that. So I'm going to use uh, C out's sister. C out has a sister and a brother. What are those two? Yeah, it's C error and C log, right? So in here, I'm going to, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say, first of all, yeah, so in so in here, I'm, what I'm going to say, I'm going to, what am I going to do? Uh, I'm going to say C, in this, in this one, I'm going to say uh, C log, and I'm going to say making a string out of C string, and I'm going to go to new line, okay? So I'm just printing a message over there, all right? And I'm going to do the exact same thing in here. I'm going to say, uh, 
Oh, and that's only if C string exists. Otherwise, it's defaulting, right? So in here, I have to, I have to say uh, C string. Uh, in here, I'm going to say CSTR. CSTR. Uh, in here, I'm going to say nothing. So what did I do? I, I said uh, if, C is, if C string is not null, if C string is not null, show the C string. If C string is null, print nothing. So if C string is nothing, it's going to say making string out of nothing. Okay? If C string has something, then it's going to do it. So in case this is null, it will work. Are we okay with that? Are we okay with that? Are we? Okay. All right. All right. So that's that. So, and then at the end, in the destructor of things, I'm going to say C log. Uh, killing string with uh, M data. Okay, so when I write this code, now I have the C log running. I, if I run the code, you will see that um, it, it's continuing to run, sorry. So when I run it, you will see that when it comes and executes test one, the outcome is going to be, where's my outcome? So let's take a look at the uh, CPP and this one. So as you see in here, it says making a string, string out of Fred, right? Making a string out of Soleil, that's what it's doing. Then it does its stuff. Then it says killing the string soleil because everything dies in reverse order. We talked about it, right? So this is how it's built. This is how it is built. So when you are building something, it's like this. So first I'm building the black one. Then I'm building the red one. Then I'm building the green one. Now when they go out of scope, which one should come off? The green one. It's always like that. So things get created in this manner, and they die in reverse order. It's always like that. Unless it's dynamic and you're doing it manually, then there is no order. If you are creating a new instance out of something and deleting it, that's your order. But if it's the compiler, uh, compiler does it that way. Okay? So it, so it uh, kills Soleil first, then it, kill, it kills the string with Fred, Fred Soleil afterwards. Now, let's, let's go to why this works thingy, okay? So in why this works when it runs, oh, I should have, uh, so it actually starts from here. So it says making, making a string, string out of Fred, you see that? Then making a string out of Soleil, you see that? No, it says making a string out of, that's the one with the space. So let me fix the, let me fix the, the printout so it actually shows what, what is it actually doing. And in here I'm going to say, so let's stop it and rerun it. Okay, and let's run it one more time. There you go. So now when we look at this, this is where it begins. Um, making, a string, making a string out of Fred, okay, so that is created. That's here. Then making a string out of Soleil, that's this one. Now name plus equal is getting called. When name plus equal is getting called, This is happening, plus equal. So it's receiving a string as S, but what we have over here is a regular constant character pointer. Because there is no match, it tries to match this one with what we have over here. Therefore, 
it is going to create a temporary string out of nothing, as you see, out of that space. So that is created now. And then immediately after the, the function is over and the concatenation is done, the life of that one is not needed anymore. So immediately it kills it afterwards. You see that? So this is your temporary string that was created at this moment. And then, it, so it builds it, uses it, kills it immediately. That's the uh, casting of constant character pointer to a string. And then Fred Soleil is printed, and then Soleil gets killed, and then Fred Soleil. Are we okay with this? All right. Obviously, if I want the log to be off, all I need to do over here is to set it to off. So I'm going to say, whoa. I'm going to say C log dot set state to iOS fail bit. But when it runs, what we see is this. We don't see all those things happening. All those things happen behind the scene, and this is the only thing we see. OK? This is a very bad way of doing it. Remove all these things from the thing, <laughs> from, the, from your string before you, before you use it. OK? Remove all these C logs. But that's why uh, having conditional uh, compilation is much better, because uh, uh, when you remove them, they are not in your code anymore. This is in your code. It's actually compiled. The source code is added to your binary, but it's never just called. That's all. So it's a bad thing to do. But I'm just going to leave it for now so we see what's going on. So you know what? Let me do the other version since we are here all sitting over here. So I'm going to actually add the debug thingy to this. So what we can do is to create a header file. And I'm going to call that header file debug.h. So that's std, uh, if not defined, stds debug h. And in here, I'm going to say define. OK. Now, in here, I'm going to say define S stds debug. Not dot .h, just stds debug. So I'm defining it in the debug header file. OK? Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the debug header file where I'm actually doing the debugging. So I'm going to say include uh, debug.h. Now, the log thingies that you see I have in here, I'm going to put it in a condition. So in here, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, if defined, stds, you see it actually adds the debug. It knows you want to debug. So debug, then have the log over there. Oh, that's a new version of debug. OK, debug. OK, so it says if it is defined, compile that. So I'm adding that little thing over there to make sure that when I remove the debug, where is it? Uh, there we go. OK, now all I need to do in my debug, I, I comment this. OK, and as soon as I comment this, all those things are gone. So now there is no need for this uh, fail state thinking. So you could use that fail state to quickly take it off and on. But uh, now if I run it because the debug statement is off, I don't see anything. And nothing is added to my source code because it's not even compiled. And when I want debugging to kick in, all I need to do is to go over here and on, on, on uh, comment that one. And now all the debugging statements going to get active. Okay? 
and that's a very helpful thing to do. Okay? All right. So, uh, so we have this. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna save this as uh, uh, a um, operator plus equal. What do I say? Plus equal main. Dot cpp. Yes. How the delete was del how the space was deleted? Didn't that space was added to name? Does the name have a destructor? Doesn't the destructor delete the name data? That's the beauty of object orientation. We did all the res so what was all this? Do you, like, why do you think there is a space sitting somewhere by itself? What was the pu purpose of all this? To replace the memory of string with something new, correct? When we added a space, the memory of string from Fred was replaced with a new one that is Fred space, correct? When the destructor of name is called, that space is gone. With the destructor. Line 48. Trust in your logic. Let's put it that way. Are we okay? People, are we okay? Now I want to make it crash. Okay? Now I want to make it crash. So, all these things look good to me, right? We just did it, and it worked perfectly. So, when I, what is this thing doing in here? We went through all that effort not to have that. <laughs> and then we had it, okay, intruder. Okay, so, so this is what we've written, and we, when we ran this thing, it worked perfectly. So... I'm just running it again, uh, and I'm gonna. So this is how it works, and everything's good. I have no problem with anything, and I'm gonna just. Uh, you're, you guys are talking a little too long, too loud. I can't understand what I'm hearing, what I'm saying. Brain doesn't work anymore. Okay, so please, quiet. Anyways, <laughs> quiet. I'm gonna bring a water gun tomorrow. Psst, psst. Anybody talk seriously? I'll do that. <laughs> All right, so now this is what I'm going to do. Take a look. I'm going to say, okay, in here I'm going to say, I can do that, right? Cross equals returning a string. So in here, I'm going to print the full name just to make these things work better. Are we okay with this? I run the program. This happens. That's the equivalent of segmentation fault core dump type of a thing. Okay? Um, why? So, to tell you why, let's put it like this, just to show you what I've done. So, what I have done in a short form, essentially, is this. I did name plus equal last, that we know is perfectly good. And then I said full name is set to name. And I ran this. And the result was a crash. Okay? Now we want to know... Why? So, this is my name. Not my name, the name object. Okay? At that line, that was line... Oh, it doesn't... 
at this line, line 10, successfully it became friend, Fred Space Soleil, correct? So line 11 is the one that caused trouble. And line 11, ladies and gentlemen, let me just see if I can actually move this a little to right so we can, yeah, we can actually make it. Yeah, so, so I, I came to part that I, so this is the, the, the M length, and that's the name. So in here, I had Fred Space Soleil, right? And I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten over here, right? That's what I had. Then I created a string full name over there. What is full name? This is my full name. Okay? String full name has data and has length, correct? Are we okay with this? When it's created by default constructor, we know everything is null. So essentially, this is null and this is zero, correct? Are we okay with this? Any problem down to here? Are we okay with this? They're actually the same. You can look at here and here, it's the same. Because <laughs> I see, he keeps doing. <laughs> okay, so, 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 so it's, so what happens over here is that, so essentially that's what, so that's what we have at line seven when we create full name, correct? Now at line 11, I'm saying full name is set to name. Did I overload, this, overload the assignment? No. So C checks left and right. Are they same object? Yes. So there is no need to overload. It's going to blindly copy everything from name into full name. What is everything in name? From eyes of the compiler, this is everything. So essentially, it copies whatever the pointer has. So the pointer becomes this. Points to the same place that that one is pointing. OK? And then in here, it's going to put 10. So if I actually run the code step by step, oh, I have to move it. Let me bring this to the other page so I can turn it on and off. I love this software. Anyway, so now if I actually run this step by step, let me just show it to you. And, and I run it right down to here. You see, I'm not getting any error message. And actually, the full name is printed. How come? How the full name gets printed? The reason is that because now this full name is actually pointing to the same place the name is pointing, Compiler doesn't know the difference. The length is 10. It's pointing to a null terminator thing. Everything's beautiful, right? But the time comes that it's going to destroy it. What happens? It starts going into the destructor. The first destructor is for the one that is created last. So full names destructor will be called, correct? Full name destructor is called, goes in here, deletes. And M data is pointing to Fred Soleil. It deletes it. So M data is deleted. So what happens is this. It's deleted. Correct? Therefore, full names data is gone. Now it goes to the next one. Now it wants to actually delete the next one. What's going to happen? Now it goes to names destructor. Actually, I think it goes to, uh, let's see which one is going to go to. Uh, I want to take a look at it. Shoot. And this thing is on my way, so I can put it over here. No, it's actually Soleil. So Soleil is getting deleted. We are good still. So that's going to get deleted. There is nothing wrong with that. OK? And now, finally, name is going to get deleted. But the problem is that name is already deleted. So it tries to delete something that is already deleted, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is boom. That is why we have something called rule of three that's going to improve to rule of five when we are going to OP three, four, five. 
rule of three. Rule of three tells us at any moment of time, you have a class, you have a class that has resources outside of its scope. As you see, names data is outside of its scope. If it was inside, if I had the name as a regular variable inside the class, I didn't need to do anything. Everything would have worked perfectly because the automatic copying of C language would have copied all the internals and therefore everything would have been copied byte by byte. Problem is that C language is not aware that I'm keeping the data outside of the scope of the class. So at any moment the data is kept outside of the class, you are required to implement three things for it to work properly. Numero uno, copy constructor. What is a copy constructor? It's a regular constructor that as an argument, it receives an object of the same type. It's very simple to implement. So, so the very first, and I haven't even showed you that, how that's going to fail. I showed you the assignment now. So let me actually show you how the copy construction is going to fail. Wow, it actually, what is, you see it actually showing the, uh, what happened, the delete that went, anyways, but it's cool. <laughs> that was the source code of the, don't worry about it. So, um, so this is, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to put over here, uh, and the second one is copy assignment that we needed here because we are copying using assignment, correct? So copy assignment should get implemented too. So in here, I'm going to say copy assignment main.cpp, okay? And I'm going to, oh, let me just turn off this for now, okay? And I'm going to bring that thing up again, this one up, and I'm going to show you what happens. So let's say I bring this full name over here, okay, and do this. Assignment at the moment of creation is what? Why I keep asking it every single time and everybody's quiet? That breaks my heart. Assignment at the moment of creation is a call to a one argument constructor. Assignment at the moment of creation is a call to a one argument constructor. So essentially this means this. Same. So ladies and gentlemen, this one is potatoes and this one is potato. Okay? They are the same. Okay? No difference. So when I do something like this, what happens? Again, because I did not implement the copy constructor, C does how it does copying, which is copying the internals again. And the exact same thing happened. The only difference is that this one happens right at the lifetime, beginning of the life of the object. And the second one that is assignment is even worse. Why? Because if your full name over here had something before that, so for the assignment problem, for the assignment case, if, for your assignment case, if your full name was already pointing to another thing, then you would be, it would be even worse. You would have memory leak on top of crash because it would have pointed to something else without deleting, right? So these are the things that you need to take care of and make sure everything works. How do we do that? What is the standard way of doing that? Now, for that, I'm going to implement it. Should I show the slides and implement or implement show slides? Let me show the slide to show you what is good, good assignment. How, do, how, do, how does good assignment actually work? Let me show you the bad assignment first. Let me show you the bad assignment first just to see what happened over there as we were doing it. So this is what happened over there. 
This is what happened over there. We had two classes. Now in two classes over here, as you see, one has one data, the other one has another, right? Then we do the assignment. As soon as you do the assignment, because C is not aware of what's going on, everything got to get copied. Therefore, B and A point to the same place. You're going to have memory leak. When A dies, the structure takes A away. When B wants to die, that's when you're going to get. So you have first memory leak, then crash. That's the bad thing about it. Okay. Now what happens with uh, what happens with uh, with uh, bad copying? Bad copying. The difference between bad copying. <clears throat> And the other one is that it's only crash, <laughs> not uh, memory leak, which means for bad copying, you have the first one, then you create the second one. Again, assignment at the moment of creation doesn't make any difference. So what happens when it creates, it copies everything over there. And when the first one, so they are both pointing to the same place. While your program runs, it looks like everything's OK. You think you have copied. You don't know you have a shared memory. <clears throat> and then it is destroyed, and the other one crashes. Okay, so how do we deal with, how do we deal with, how do we make good assignment? This is how we do it. Good assignment is done like this. So you have two classes and you want to do the assignment. So one wants to get assigned to another one. The very first thing that you need to do is to delete the old one. So you have to overload the assignment operator. First, delete the old one. Make sure you don't have anything. After doing that, measure what is the size of the other one and allocate the exact same size. Then you have to copy everything one by one from the old one to the new one. Then you copy, update the size, and you're done. Now you have two separate objects. Each one have its own data. Life is beautiful. Are we OK with this? Now what's the difference between copying uh, so, and the destru destructor goes, everything's good, and the destructor, the other one goes, and life is beautiful. All right? So, with good copying, where's my good copy? It's the same thing. Now, I'll, I'll show you, uh, and, and I'm going to make a point out of it. So, when you are doing copying, this is what happens. So, as soon as you are creating it, immediately, you don't need to delete anything. Because B is brand new now. Nothing is needed to be deleted. It's just brand new object. All you need to do is to do the second part of the assignment thingy, which means no deleted needed, just measure the size, do the copying, and yada, yada, yada. Now when they are deleted, life is beautiful, and we have the smiley face coming up. All right? So that's why usually when you want to do this, you write the complicated one, which is the assignment. Because in assignment, you have to first delete the old data, right? And then you reuse that in your constructor. That's all you need to do. So what you do over here in string header file, first of all, we need rule of three. Oh, I said the two. So one was copy assignment. The other one is copy constructor. And the last one is destructor. These three things must be created. So if you ask what is rule of three anywhere, with respect to object orientation, they're going to tell you. And in OP345, it's going to get expanded to rule of, rule of five with some juicy stuff getting added to it, hence another semester. OK, so now let's do that. I have, so I want to have rule of three. So I'm going to say string, obviously constant string reference uh, s. If you don't put reference over here, chicken and the egg is going to happen. You are implementing copy construction, but you are using copy construction in the process. Because if you pass by value, it gets copied, right? So you have to make sure that's not a reference. I think like old compilers used to just, your program would go in an endless loop and the stack would overflow and it would crash. But I think the compiler is going to tell you, hey, don't do that now. I haven't tried it, but try it and let me know. So that's the copy construction. And copy assignment is, is simply the same thing, operator equal and a constant string reference s. So these are the rule of three.
So, for rule of three, what do we do? For copy constructor, it's pretty simple. For copy constructor, first I have to make sure that everything is set to null. In here, I already did that because the uh, data is initialized to be zero, right? So everything is zero already. But I'm just going to comment it in here and make sure we remember that. First, set everything. So set to safe empty state. Okay? Done already in class uh, initialization. Right? When we initialize the class, we did that. So I don't need to do it. Then what do you do? You say operator equal, and you pass S. Of course, you write operator, not operator. And you call the operator equal. Now you design your operator equal properly. And you reuse your code, so you don't have to do it. So for all those people who are in tests and stuff, if I told you, and I didn't mention you how, if I told you create a copy constructor, two seconds. You don't need to implement anything. Okay? Unless I tell you, without the use of operator equal implement copy constructor, then you have to actually do it. Okay? Which we're going to see what happens next. So, for the next step, we are going to have the, so this is done. Now I'm going to go to copy assignment. For copy assignment, let's actually split it in two. It's better to do like that so we actually see what we are doing properly. So for copy assignment, the steps are clear. Copy assignment, copy assignment. Where are we? Uh, let's put the header of, um, no, no, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Mistake. Yeah, so for copy assignment, what do I do? First of all, I have to count for user stupidity. And sometimes not stupidity, just uh, unfortunate events, which is somebody doing something like this. They can do that, right? Compiler is not aware of anything in here. Compiler, when it's an assignment, first it ev evaluates the right side, then it sends it to left side, correct? So we have to take care of this, make sure that this doesn't happen. And that's very simple. Because I have the address of the current object, all I need to do to say, if this is not equal to the address of S, do the assignment. Otherwise, I don't need to do anything. That prevents self-copy. And of course, at the end, I'm going to return this. I'm not going to bother with that, okay? Are we okay with this? So now we know how we prevent name is equal to name. That's, that's going to get, so nothing happens. If you assign something to itself, it is itself, right? And then what do you next? What do you do next? Next thing you need to do, you need to copy everything from S into here, right? So you need to make sure that the copying is required, okay? First of all, you have to make sure you have nothing in here. You have to wipe everything up because it's going to be assigned to something else. So the very first thing over here is to delete M data. If it's null, we don't care. If it is not null, it's wiped out. Correct? Right? When we have an unused pointer, what do we do? Always set it to null PTR. We follow that rule. Correct? Now we check. Is there anything to copy? How do I know that? I check if the other one is valid or not. So all I need to do in here is to say if S. So if I have anything in S, and I have overloaded that, so I could say if S dot M data to make you happy, but, I, but hey, it means the same thing as this one, right? The Boolean operator, correct? But I'm just going to do it like this for that. For, so it's, it's going to say the same as bool operator and not is empty, which you should not do 
The reason I'm doing it is to generalize it for any implementation. Okay? So you know the data has to be removed uh, and the data needs to exist to copy. So that's what I'm doing. And now, now that the data exists in the other one, I'm going to do the exact same thing I have done over here. You see that? Which means I'm going to say the length is equal to s dot length because it's going to be the same. Now I'm going to say the data will be s dot or length itself. That's fine. Length plus one. Now copy s dot m, m data into here and done. So the first one, so I did that. In reverse, I first updated the size. So I got the size first from the thing. Then I said, check what's the length and allocate memory. Now copy everything. Now everything's copied. Life is beautiful. And now I'm not going to have any crash in neither way because the copying will do. So in here, just to check to see what happens in here, I'm going to say last will be equal to name two. So we'll do that for the assignment. Full name is going to be copy construction, so we'll test everything and see how everything works. Let's run it. Run for its run type of a thing. All right. Oh, stop. Stop. It, it was running. That's why. I should stop it first. There we go. One more time. There we go. So all these things will work. We know that. There's nothing wrong with these things. Now, Copy constructor. As soon as it wants to copy the name, it comes into the copy constructor over here. As you see, the very first thing that is happening, the data of what is being copied, which means full name, will be null, the length will be zero. Now, the assignment wants to happen. It passes the reference of S, which is essentially name, into the operator equal of full name. So it goes over there. Do we have the same address? No, they're two different objects. So delete the data of mine, which happens to be nothing because it's brand new. And there's nothing wrong with that. Set the data to the raw pointer again, nothing. Now it says, do I have a data in the other one? Yes, I do. So I'm going to come over here, get the length of that one that is 10, put it in this one, allocate 11 bytes, copy everything, and return this. Therefore, now, my full name over here will have Fred Soleil in it. Now it says copy name to itself through assignment. It comes through assignment. <clears throat> is my address that is 488 the same as address of S that is 488? Yes, so do nothing. Done. So nothing happens. Now assign last to name. Last was Soleil, right? So we're going to go in here. Now it comes in. Do we have the same address? No. First, delete the data, which is so late. Now it's deleted. Set it to null. Why set it to null? Because maybe the other one doesn't have data. If it doesn't, I should leave this one as empty. And the condition of being empty is being null PTR. Therefore, we follow the rule of setting the pointer to null PTR. But this one, the other one, actually has data. And therefore, the length will be overwritten by that one, which was 5. Now it becomes 10. Also, I made a mistake. I made a bug. There's a bug in here. You know what's the bug? The bug is that if the other one didn't have data, I would have set the null pointer to null, but size would have remained 5. That's a bug. OK? We'll fix it later. But anyways, now we, will not, we wouldn't have noticed, but I'll do it. So in here. I'm going to do a string copy, and now life is beautiful and everything is good and everything gets destroyed perfectly with no error. Okay? So in here, I, I would, it would have been better. Do I have a set empty here? I don't. Let's have a set empty. Instead of doing all these things, let's have a set empty. So I'm going to have void, set empty, and set empty sets everything to null. So let's uh, make that. A definition of course I told you to go to it to create it there you go so now in here I'm gonna say m data being null PTR and m length being zero right 
Are we okay with this? So now I have something that I'm actually using instead of these two lines that I'm writing in here. I'm going to say, where is it? So I'm saying first delete it, then set to empty. Now, now it actually makes sense. It's setting empty, so I'm going to say set empty in case S is empty. If, if S was not empty, for sure, I didn't need to do that. But there is no way to know, so that's the case. And that, ladies and gentlemen, classes with resource. Done. For anything that you have dynamic memory in, you need to do this. You need to take care of the data that is sitting outside, in any case. Any question one? I just mentioned. Why? So let's say I have this. All right? Now I'm writing over here, uh, full name is set to empty. Oh, empty. Shh. Somebody sink my fingers with my brain. OK, empty. <laughs> OK, are we OK with this? Now, if I don't set it to empty, what's going to happen? Let's come over here. So I'm just going to run it right to that point. I'm not setting it to empty. I didn't set anything to null. So now it, so the right one is empty, correct? So it comes right in here and says, delete my current data. Fantastic. Correct? Doesn't set anything to empty, correct? Then it comes over here. And it wants to copy the other one, but the other one is empty. So nothing happens, right? So I come out, and I'm here. Full name doesn't have anything in it, but its length is 5. Let me show you. Actually, not 5, 10, even worse. And the data is not empty. So if I actually display full name, it has no way to detect if it was empty. And if I do that, let me see if I can, if it, if it actually run it. You will see it actually crashes. So let me just go one more time. So now if I run it right, come on, stop it. One more time. So now that full name is seem to be OK. When I print it, what I'm going to have will be this. Because it thinks it's 10 characters and it has something in it, where it doesn't. Therefore, at any moment, you delete something, you set it to null to make sure you flag it to be empty. Does that make sense? All right. So we're good. Now we can take a break, and then we come back. We're going to make this string even look better. Save everything. Pause. So uh, this, this, this is the main for the rule of three. So I'm going to put over here, uh, I'm going to say C testing rule of three, OK? We're going to come back to it after. For now, I want to talk about files. OK? So files, this is the story of files. We don't need the string thingy for now. So when you see workshop six, you're going to kind of get what's going on. OK? So what I want to do. So. Um, I have the thing. Let me do it over there. It's, it's quicker and faster to, to actually draw it on the, on the board. There we go. So, so all right. So we have, um, what was the, what, what were the three rules of, uh, three main uh, aspects of object orientation? The first one. 
Decapsulation? Uh, two. <laughs> what? My love. Polymorphism, yes? <laughs> Inheritance. Inheritance, thank you. So these are the three things that we have. Encapsulation, in, uh, polymorphism, and uh, inheritance, right? Okay. Inheritance is the one that we are interested on now about. We know how it exists, and we're going to see how it works without actually uh, knowing how to implement it. Implementation after the break. Okay, so, so when you are dealing with the uh, hierarchy of classes for input-output in in C++, there is something at the top setting over there called iOS. That's the one when you say iOS left, iOS right. That's, that's mother of all everything, OK? Then that is inherited into two, uh, two classes, OK? Inherited into two classes. It's actually shown like this. So one is called iStream, and the other one is called O stream. And that's what you are using. But these two classes, they have private constructors. You cannot instantiate them. These two classes, they have private constructors. You cannot instantiate them. So O stream is instantiated into C out, C log, and C error, correct? That's what we have. And iStream is instantiated into C in. So we can say C in dot this, C out dot that, right? Are we okay down to this point? Now, then these two are inherited into two classes. This is IF stream, and this one is OF stream. Got it? IF stream does everything that CN can do. OF stream can do everything that O stream can do because it's parent. It is, it is its parent. It inherited everything out of it. Now, even more than that, they actually, these two, multiple inheritance into what we call F stream. Okay, now these three objects, if stream, of stream, and f stream, they have public constructors, which means you can instantiate them. Why? Obviously, these are dealing with files. So these are created to handle files. So all these are created to handle files. Okay, and unlike these two, that are created to deal with console, they can have many different ones. Console is one thing. That's why CN cannot get instantiated. You have one console input. It's not like five keyboards that you're doing. It's one keyboard, right? And output is one terminal you're printing on. So that's why you have one, OK? And they, they created that, but that's why you cannot create new instances out of it. You can pass the references around but you cannot create new instances. These guys, no. You can have 50 files on a hard drive. That's why they, are in, they, are, they have constructors. Now, if you were to create a class that represented, represented a file, what would you pass to its constructor? File name. Done. The last one, don't care about it at the moment. Just those two. Last one is to read and write from and into a file, into the same file. We don't want to do that. We want to read from a file and then write to a file for now. So we are only interested in those two ones, IF stream and OF, OF stream. So if I want to write a code for this, first of all, and, and by the way, this is the name of the header file. So the header file is F stream, and it has the definition of all of them in there. And it, yeah, it has the same name of the thing. So, so in here, I, I simply include f stream. That means i stream and o, o, everything comes in. 
Now in here I'm gonna say OF stream file my file.txt. Right? How do you print in C out? You do C out, hello, and you go and L, correct? File is child of C out. So you go file. It knows everything C out knows. Run it. Three years later, when it compiles and runs, you will see you have nothing on a screen. Why? Because you just printed in a file. So you just open it, and you'll see on your hard drive, you have myfile.txt that has hello in it. Right? Now, do I need to have a close for this? No. Because it has a destructor. Any sane person will close the file in the destructor, correct? Do I need to have an open for it? No. Any sane person will open it in a constructor, right? But of course, it has it. If I want to close it and reopen it with something else, of course I can. I can say file.close. I can do that. I can say file.open and pass the name of the file to it. No problem. It has anything that you think it makes sense, it has it. And anything you have done that, like, if I want to read from that my file thing, what do I do? I'm going to say if stream in file, let's call it, let's call it the exact same thing, my file.txt. And in here, I'm going to say, what do I do? Character ch is equal to in file.get. And I'm going to go c out ch. What's going to get printed in here? H. Easy. I mean, like, it's obvious. And exact, the, as, as our friend was saying over here, is it difficult? The answer is no. Just imagine the difference is that when you have console, an idiot is sitting at the keyboard putting nonsense stuff. With files, you have the format of the file. You know exactly how the things are coming in. All you need to do is to program exactly like the file is. File is. If there's a comma separated, so you read up to comma, ignore the comma, read, and then when you are at new line, finish, you go to, so you write everything. And you don't need to tell it, oh, this is wrong, enter it again. If scene fails, just stop and say file was corrupted. Format of the file is incorrect, correct it. You will be kind to say what was the last successful thing you read. You can say, okay, the last thing that I read was this that was successful. So go fix your file and come back to me again. Okay? That's all. That's file. Done. You don't need anything else. Anything you did from the keyboard, you can do from a file. Anything you have done on console, you can do in a file. Easy breezy. Now, to show you something cool, Remember we wrote a string? All right. Now in here I'm going to say string uh, name is, give me a name. What do I do? Mm. Oh. Okay, now I'm going to say, now, actually, let's put it up here. I'm going to say hello, and I'm going to put over here name. Did I implement anything for C, for, for a string to get printed in a file? No, I didn't. So how, uh, let's actually see if it works. If it works, it means I didn't design it properly. I'll tell you why. But, it, but we run it, and we don't have anything. Do you see an error? No. Let me take a look at the file. Hello, Homer Simpson. How did it work? I didn't write any code for it. All I did was to overload the, where is the thing? Overload the display, right? Where is my display? 
right? But I told you, make O stream flow through your display. What happens? In here, you are receiving O stream, that one, correct? Isn't O stream OF stream's mother or father? So can you call me Mr. Soleimanlu? And I will still respond, correct? It's the same thing. You pass the file to the reference of its parent. Therefore, it's as if you are calling them with their family name. They still act like a file. Although it is a console reference, but because an object of file is in it, it's going to act like a file. And that's the beauty of polymorphism. That's actually super duper polymorphism we're going to learn when we get to virtuals. So this is how it happens. That's why it's so simple. Anything you have done with OStream, if you actually listen to me and your files <clears throat> didn't use C out in here instead of OStream, if you use C out, then it wouldn't print in a file. It would print it on a, right? But when you make OStream flow to it, this OStream will be the reference of its child, which is OF stream, and therefore it acts like a file. Are we good? Done. That is files, and I told you it doesn't take more than three, four minutes, and that was my promise. Now go knock yourself out. Write some code. Write, re, like, <clears throat> the best thing to do is to open up the source code of your own file and read from it and see how it works. Okay? Try to, like, write a copy command that copies files and stuff like that. You can do. Like, open the source code and write it, do something with it. You can do all those stuff. Anyways, it, it works. Everything works exactly as it did. So, um, so, uh, so let's actually, now that I said it, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to say OF, uh, IF stream CPP, and the name is PRG.CPP, right? CPP. So I'm opening this thing for that, for that one. And I'm going to have OF stream uh, CPP copy. Copy. And I'm going to say PRG copy dot CPP. OK? Now in here, I'm going to say while do what? Do. And in here, I'm going to say, uh, what is that? CH is set to uh, CPP dot get. And I'm going to say if CPP. Uh, CPP copy CH while CPP done. So I'm getting read one character, run by character. I just copied the file, run the file, run the program, and after I run the program, you will see that in here I will have a PRG thingy. There you go, it's a copy of the same thing. Right? So again, go and practice on this. Are we okay with this? So that's files that I wanted to tell you. Do you know how to read it with C out, an integer? With C in? That's how you read it from a file. If you have an integer, you go C in in an integer, it's going to read an integer. But C in is your file now. I'm not joking when I say they are identical. Anything you did with C in, how do you read from C in an integer, a double? You read the exact same thing from a file. OK? All right. So that's that. So I'm going to say. Uh, Uh, D files. <clears throat> now, let's go back to, let's go back to our string. Let's go back to our string. <clears throat> when we know how copy constructor is called when we write it. But where you don't know is that copy constructor is getting called in many different places, OK? Most importantly are these two things. At any moment you pass anything by value, copy constructor is called. 
If I say void print, and in here I say string s, whoop, string s, and I go C out s, and I go over here print, <clears throat> name, copy constructor would be called. Why? Because calling print essentially translates to print string s set to name, right? That's how it's called. I mentioned at the beginning of the semester. Any function call is essentially initializing the argument to the value you are passing. What is assignment at the moment of creation? Constructor, one argument constructor. What is being passed? Same object. Same object, copy constructor. Done. That's number one. Are we okay? Number two. Oh, that's a difficult one. Let me write it. And I'm going to challenge you to write that good thing. So we wrote C out. But how do we do C in? How do I actually get a string from keyboard? Dynamically. That's tough, right? It's actually very complicated. If you can actually write it, so you can dynamically get any size from console, I have a good price for you, okay? But let's do it. So in here, I'm, I, had, I had display. Now I'm going to have read. So std istream reference read. <clears throat> std istream reference istr set to standard cn. So I want to write that. And obviously, right off the bat over here, it's going to be overloaded to, overloaded to uh, istream, istream uh, reference operator and std istream reference istr and const, not const, uh, string reference write operand. That's how it's going to be. I'm going to write this one first because it's very simple. So in here, I'm going to say <clears throat> return iStream.read, and I'm going to pass right operand to it. Done. So that's easy. Why? Did I make it constant or something? No suitable conversion. It does. I did it. Oh. <laughs> Stupid. Sorry. <laughs> Excusez-moi. Pardonnez-moi. I made a mistake. That's the right one. <clears throat> okay. My, I, th I told you, my brain and stuff are not synced in the proper way. Anyway, so uh, write operand read, and I pass the ISDR to it. Now let's do the read. <clears throat> I'm going to do the easy one. You do the uh, difficult one. Okay. <clears throat> I need to have a dynamic string coming in. So what I will do in here, I assume that nobody's going to enter anything more than 4,000 characters, right? So I'm going to create a local variable in here. I'm going to say character, say... Um, now, this one is really temp, and I'm going to put over here uh, 496, let's say, 4,096, 4, right? That's 90, Seriously, my brain is going to 490. 496 is 4K, right? Yeah, 496, okay. <clears throat> okay, so, so I'm going to do it like that. Uh, then I'm going to say... Uh, uh, I stream dot uh, get line into temp for T96, right? Now that I get this, I'm going to do the exact same thing as I did for the copying. Remember in, in here I did copying? Uh, where is it? Uh, here, there you go. You see that? I'm going to copy that, and after that, I'm going to write a code for it because it's awful that, I'm keep, that I keep doing this over and over. Actually, let me do it right now. So instead of writing a gibberish like this every single time, okay, because this, is, this essentially is allocating and copying at the same time, right? So what I'm going to do in here is this. I'm going to say, <clears throat> I'm going to say, go to utils, create a function called that's, that returns a character pointer, allo copy that is allocate and copy. And in here, I'm going to say constant character source, right? 
and and obviously it's constant because I'm not changing anything in here. Did I copy it? Yes. Okay, so <clears throat> the only problem over here is length, so I'm going to put the length over here, and I'm going to say, uh, actually, I'm going to put it at left. So I'm going to say size t reference length. So it returns the length from there. So length will be SDRN of source, correct? Oh, I have to, I have to add that one over here. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know. I'll do that. I'll, I'll, I'll fix that typo, but I need to correct the, correct the prototype too. This is size T reference. Length, right? <clears throat> so save it and come back in here. So <clears throat> yeah. So no. Uh, here, where is it? Uh, Utils.cpp. So there we go. It receives the length. Allo copy. I don't know why is it giving me error because I didn't put constant here. Okay. So length is uh, th that one, and then I'm gonna say. Uh, uh, in here is uh, character pointer to return, so return, that is null, and I'm going to say that's what I'm going to return, and that's the size of length that I'm actually getting, and I'm going to do usdr copy into the return thingy what I am actually getting in here, source, correct? Got right, so I'm going to say return red. And now I can actually put this one to make sure everything is good. I can say over here, uh, if, so in here I'm going to say length is set to zero. And I'm going to say if source actually exists, do all these stuff. Otherwise, if you are copying nothing, it should be nothing, right? And that's that. So that's my allocation and copying, so I don't have to keep doing it over and over and over. So in string thingy over here, for example, in here, um, instead of doing all this, I can do that. I'll do it later. I'm not going to do it now because I'm implementing my read. So in read, now that I have it, I'm going to say m <coughs> data will be set to u.allocopy uh, m length. I get the length over here, and it's going to be temp. So that's going to allocate and copy for that one. And... Uh, return ice tree. Let's check it out. So, what is wrong with this? I'm like this read, right? So read belongs, so let me just bring this one. Something's horribly wrong with this, not just a little bit, like a holy mother of wrong. Okay? So, <clears throat> let me just show you. So, this is your this is your string dot h. Allo copy sim sound, but what is wrong with my read? Allocation and copying is fantastic. There's nothing wrong with that. What is wrong with my read? Nope. Get line gets the temp, right? If I recall correctly, but even not that. Okay, I, I'm just setting M data without deleting it. I may, it's it's, it's going to actually work beautifully with lots of memory leak. So in here, what you need to do before doing anything in here, you have to check to see if, uh, if am I, do I have anything in me? If I do, delete M data and set empty. Then do whatever you are doing. Right? So if I have something, so now CN is going to work. So the reason I did this the whole purpose of this one was to be able to do this. So let me go, come over here. I'm going to say C out name. Okay. And I'm going to say C in name. 
and I'm going to say see out hello name, right? Okay? And go to new line. So let's run it and see how it works. All right. So everything over here is going to work. CN is getting called. It's going to come in here, do the read. So it goes in here. Temp will be some garbage over there. Do I have something in me? Yes. Delete everything. Set it to empty. Beautiful. Get line. So it comes over here. Get line. In here, I'm going to say Fred Soleil, and I hit enter. Get line will get whatever. Temp will have Fred Soleil in it. Now it's going to go allo copy. So it comes over here, says return value is null. Length is zero, so it sets whatever length it was to zero. Source exists, and it's Fred Soleil. So it gets the length, put it its length, allocates out in the, uh, in the red, copies the value in the red, sets the address back, which M data will point to, and therefore uh, life is beautiful. And I'm going to have over here, hello, Fred Soleil. Are we okay with this? Now, what's wrong with this? And nothing is actually wrong with this. I just want to make a point. If I want to, as I wrote print over there, I'm going to have something like this, string read. And in here, I'm going to say string uh, temp. And I'm going to say C in temp. I don't know why it's all white, but hey. And I'm going to say return temp. So instead of, why is it doing this to me? Did I misspell something? I don't know. We'll see if it's me or whatever. Okay. So now instead of, instead of that CN thingy that we have done over there, instead of this, what I will do will be this. Uh, uh, name is set to read. Oh, let's call it get. Get is better. Just to get something. Okay, so I'm getting a string. Are you okay with this? I don't know why it's... We'll find out. So now when I do this... Okay, I don't know. It comes over here. It goes to get. Now a temp string will be get, getting created. It jumped right to return. Why CN didn't work? What the devil is going on? What did I do wrong here? Yes. It's 22. When does it end? 20? Okay, we'll stop. We'll continue later. Okay. I'll find it at home and I'll let you know. I'm doing something wrong somewhere. I don't know what. 